Well, hello everyone and welcome to another very exciting episode here on the MI Gardener channel. It's an absolutely beautiful day, so hopefully it's an absolutely beautiful day wherever you are watching from. But if it's not, take this time to go catch up on some other MI Gardener episodes and, uh, you know, binge watch a little bit. We love that when you do that. Uh, but today's episode is really exciting because we're going to be talking about tomatoes and how we keep them blight free. Now I get asked all the time how I keep my tomatoes blight free in the garden and let me first start off by saying our tomatoes are never blight free. Blight is pretty much a given in any garden unless you're growing in like the most ideal situation. And so it will happen inevitably whether it's in the beginning or the end of the growing season. And that is early blight being the beginning of the growing season and late blight which is typically for us in like late october early november around that first frost period you'll get late blight and so uh either way we're almost bound to get it but there are some things that you can do to combat it and even prevent it and it's so easy there's two of them that we do here in the garden so i'm only going to give you two because uh, i can speak highly of these two and they're very very effective and the first one is simply by increasing airflow. One thing we've done in the garden is, as you can see, we've raised the plants up. They're in raised beds, and that's going to get that additional airflow. Because what blight likes? Blight likes damp, stagnant air that is either very humid or very cold. Typically, it's the colder end of the spectrum that they like because fungus needs that to, uh, to colonize the leaves. But you do see some circumstances in which blight will colonize in very hot, humid temperatures as well. So uh, both ends of the spectrum, blight can be found, but typically for us here in Michigan, it's the colder, damp, stagnant air. And the, the way that you can combat that is, like I said, airflow. Because again, you're taking out that stagnant air. Because it's a fungus, it breeds with spores. And it will actually, the spores will land on your plants. Typically the spores are found in your soil. There's, there's almost no way to get the blight spores out of your soil. You can do, people say crop rotations, people say, uh, you know, solarize your soil. We'll get into some of those episodes later on. But I have found in my experience trying those, you still don't get rid of the blight. It just happens. Um, so that's one very effective way is just by increasing the, uh, the, the amount of airflow that you get. Another part to increasing airflow is pruning. It is so important to prune your plants. As you can see, we've actually gone below the plant and we've pruned about six to eight inches off of the plant. And what that's going to do is it's going to do two things. It's going to keep the leaves off of the soil where typically splashing occurs when you water or it rains, dirt particles will land and with those dirt particles gets the blight spores, uh, hence giving you blight on the leaves. So um, it's going to keep the leaves off of the soil, but what it's also going to do is it's going to open up those lower leaves, again, elevating the plant, because typically the higher the plant, up the plant you can get, the more airflow that you can get, and you're thinning those lower dense leaves. Now, a second part to increasing airflow is spacing. Here in the MI Gardener channel, as you know, we love high intensity gardening. So spacing is not something that we focus on, but, spacing is very important with increasing that airflow because uh, it doesn't look like we've spaced our plants out that much, but really we have about almost two feet spacing between plants. And with two feet spacing, that's going to give you lots of airflow. But once the plants grow up, it almost looks like they're, you know, almost 10 inches apart. But it's very, very vital to put your tomatoes far enough apart so that as they grow, even if they get, you know, all merged together like we have behind me, there's still that adequate spacing because if you, put them a, if you put them a foot apart, you're gonna find that the plants will grow even closer together. And then it's just too much foliage and the foliage uh, will stay damp longer when you water or it rains. It's going to not get that airflow through there to again, dry out the leaves. And, uh, and it's just going to be, it's gonna be, um, it's gonna be a haven for blight, let's put it that way. Now the second method that we use very frequently here, once we have blight, typically it's easier to take care of early blight than it is late blight. Late blight is what they consider the, the game mender. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's the knockout punch that pre pretty much always will take out your plants. But you can 
definitely get rid of early blight because early blight happens early in the season and it's typically again because it's that it's that cold damp stuff so as soon as the weather warms up like we have today the blight doesn't stand a chance in this weather it just dries up because uh, blight essentially needs an environment that it can colonize so if it's too hot if it's too dry if it's too um, if it's too alkaline or too acidic the the blight will not colonize the leaves. And that's the magic of preventing this. It's so simple that there's, you don't have to be a scientist or, you know, you don't have to be a master gardener to take care of blight. It just, there's a few things that if you take out of the equation, that blight's not going to exist. So what we do is we actually will mix up a baking soda and water solution. We simply take, uh, we have videos on this as well. I'm gonna post a link to the video we did specifically on the baking soda spray. It's very good, it's old, but it's very good, so don't mind the quality. But we take essentially anywhere between one and three tablespoons of baking soda to a gallon of water. I typically recommend starting with the one tablespoon and working up to the three so that you don't burn your plants because it can hurt your plant leaves. Um, and then we mix in um, just a tiny bit of dish soap and about a uh, one to one ratio of oil to uh, baking soda. And that dish soap is going to help emulsify the oil into the water so that when you spray the baking soda solution onto the leaves, it sticks. What that's going to do is it's, uh, it's very alkaline. Uh, baking soda is, is an alkaline. Uh, it's an alkaline pH, meaning that it has a, a higher pH above seven. And so what happens is that it's going to create, again, that, that inhospitable environment for the blight. So it's something that we use in the early spring to get us through that cold weather because right now it's about 85 degrees and that's plenty warm enough to keep the plants healthy. As you can see, they're loving it, they're smiling, they're happy, but we did have blight early on in the season. It's almost inevitable and you really cannot, uh, you really can't just get away from it. So you can do those methods. And again, the plants are not dying, the blight is not spreading. Um, and it's, it's really, you know, it's just something that's so easy, but a lot of people freak out about it and take a chainsaw out of their plants because they don't want it spreading. But um, those few things I know you can apply, I know will work, and I know you all are going to have great success with it. Now, a very quick tip for you all that I want to give is to make sure that you do remove your blight-ridden leaves and don't put them in the compost pile. Because a lot of people, they want to remove the blight leaves and put them into the compost pile to kind of at least reuse something from the garden. However, what you're going to be doing is you're going to only be enhancing the amount of blight spores in that compost, making even more blight spores in the garden soil. So uh, what we typically do is we will come through and when we prune, going back to the pruning part, we will prune off any of the blight ridden leaves. Typically those are the, the, the uh, leaves between one and uh, one inch and one foot uh, from the ground. So the right at soil level up to about a foot, those are gonna be your blighty leaves that you typically will always get. We'll remove all of those so we can increase the airflow and we'll take those and we'll put them right onto the, uh, right onto the fire bin and we'll burn those at the end of the season um, so that none of those blight spores are gonna be getting back into the soil. So that's really it. Um, oh, one more tip. When you're pruning, we always suggest, if you're using scissors or pruners, it doesn't matter, to always carry around a little bottle of isopropyl alcohol. What that will do is between plants, you do not want to cross contaminate your plants. And so what we'll do is we'll take some isopropyl alcohol with a little cotton swab or um, a cotton ball and we'll, we'll rub that down um, the shears or the scissors so that we're not taking the blight from plant to plant because it can spread, it's a spore. So just like mold can spread in your refrigerator if you leave cheese too long. <laughs> or any type of food for that matter, um, it will spread just the same in the garden. So um, there's those tips for you. Hopefully they help. Hopefully you all enjoyed. Hopefully you share this video with your friends because I think um, it's so simple. You know, it's so simple to get rid of. So I hope you all enjoyed. Hopefully you all are enjoying your day. Hopefully you all are growing bigger going home and I'll catch you all later. This is Luke from the My Gardener channel. See ya. Bye.